Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars and I have a story about the soul wounding that I heard on the astral plane and from the astral story some years back, might have been in 2013. And I thought I'd run through it very quickly from the standpoint of healing, maybe in a psychological context or possibly in the context of my new inner child therapy, which is very quick, works very quickly. So it has that to its advantage. Anyway, however the method of healing, here's, here's the gist of the issue that caused a soul wounding, either in this lifetime or some other lifetime, for a young man, maybe between the age of 9 and 14, sometime in, in early young manhood. He was a sharecropper's son. The family was just eking out an existence in a rural environment, maybe to the west of Appalachians, um, in the flatlands, the scrubby flatlands to the west of the Appalachians. And um, it, it came to the time of his initiation into manhood and his first act of intercourse. You know, in some areas, uh, in some folklores, they think that the pineal gland, the light that comes forth from them through the third eye point is evil. And that can be the case that curses and so forth, or love charms and like that, are um, promoted or through the malware of the third eye point if, it, if the energy is not cleared and balanced. But the main function of the third eye point is to keep the body healthy. All of the subtle bodies healthy too. So I just thought I'd mention that because he was he was in a situation where the nearest possible willing person was an older woman in his context, maybe not that old, maybe in her twenties, who was known in the area for having the evil eye. And what that means to a young person is that the person in question has formidable psychic powers and is, you know, dangerous because of that. So in addition to the concerns that a young child might have about proving his manhood, uh, there was also the concern about the, the, uh, the evil eye and the, the psychic powers of this woman that, that ended up actually having intercourse with him. So he was very young. Uh, and um, he thought to go back another time to visit her. He fell in love with her. And he thought to go back another time to visit her. And when he went there, uh, a, a terrible, a really terrible thing happened. Uh, she had a boyfriend, apparently, or an admirer, who waylaid this young child and uh, genitally mutilated him. And so then he had this soul wounding and physical wounding. I'm not sure to what extent. He was allowed, he was, at least he was alive, and he was allowed to go home. But then um, he was plagued or, by visions of the third eye point of this woman, this witchy woman, uh, what he felt attacking him. And eventually, after some years, he ended up persuading a friend or acquaintance to actually go and end her life. So through him, she, she his very first love, was murdered. Now, time went on. Time has got, much time has gone on. And, and, but, however, today, the outcome of this soul wounding has been that he projects onto women, especially women who have third eye point ability, as many students of the Indian arts have, he projects onto them his terror of this first woman and his terror also of that sex act because it was because of the sex act that he received the genital mutilation. And it, was, and it was the woman's third eye point that symbolized this extreme, um, this extreme feeling of um, just upset and, and, 
and injury and terror. Okay, And it was in fact the man in this situation who caused the injury. So from a psychological point of view, I would say that um, he projected onto that woman his, his fear, actually, of that man. Because he felt, I would say, if I were a psychologist, because he felt that the man was too dangerous to blame for that incident. The man was surely too dangerous to even ideate or think about. So, so in turn, he projected that upset that he felt onto the woman. And so as time went on, decades went on, in his mature years, this memory of unresolved soul wounding expresses itself in his life in this way. Um, I think, I mean, I'm not totally clear, but it seems to me from the astral stories um, about this person who may be actually um, an archetypal image rather than a person. It seems to me from the astral stories that his sex life consists of anal intercourse with other men and that he is a recipient of that anal intercourse because of the nature of his genital wounding. Now, the psychological uh, payoff or advantage is that um, he, he gathers friendships uh, amongst men who, because of the childhood wounding, seem to be far more powerful than they actually are in the world. So his friendships are with the men that he has sex with. Um, and, um, and so the intention is to mitigate that ever-present danger uh, to his genitals and to his actual physical continued existence. His attitude towards women is one of mistrust, <clears throat> of, of uneasiness and mistrust, and when he is confronted with their uh, their um, attraction to him, it he then returns to that or, uh, original story about the soul wounding and the genital mutilation, and it becomes to him their their flirtation becomes to him a, an imminent danger and threat to his life. So. So he responds to flirtation uh, by women in a way that seems to most people to be um, too, uh, too hyper-responsive, you know, too, um, too emotionally intense in the negative realm. Uh, if he finds that because of social societal expectations, he must have intercourse with the woman so as to look, to appear to fit in to a social setting. He will, he will have uh, anal intercourse with her. Um, he will need a prophylactic to do that. Um, and she may never know that, but she will leave that encounter feeling that she has been, in, in our terms, in our terms of the awakening, she has been malwared up um, because the, the, the emotion and the images that are stored in his electromagnetic field in his second chakra involved such a shocked amount of, of injury, unresolved injury, what you might call um, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder there which is transferred during the act of sex. It's totally transferred to the other person, kept by the one person and transferred to the other person. Um, not necessarily permanently, but perhaps for some time there will be the need to regenerate the electromagnetic field and clear it for a woman who has intercourse with him. Um, if the person is psychically gifted, then we may find that 
that he is um, going out there on the astral plane uh, at night. He, perhaps his own wounded astral form is going out there uh, during dream time. He may or may not be conscious of this, depending on whether he can do lucid dreaming. It's going out and destroying women's dreams of of having uh, romantic relationships. Uh, this is a topic that I've covered elsewhere under the category dream snatchers. And so, um, so even he may try to to remodel the um, to remodel their their dreams um, so that they suit a purpose that he has um, for himself and his own life. Um, in these days of higher light, of more intense incoming light, this is no longer possible. But before 2012, it was possible for um, a super psi person to do that kind of work with a limited number of women or men. So, um, so there is that. <clears throat> now, talking about the men, the men that he has uh, intercourse with. He will want to uh, conceal the fact that he prefers M to M uh, sexual expression from the general public. Now, why this is that he would feel exceptionally so in this regard, I I'm not certain. Maybe because of the great repressive energy around the original wounding. Maybe because of the projection, um, the projection of the wounding onto the woman also con conceals and a great fear that he has about men. Maybe there's a concern that the man involved in his social sexual life might do him great damage because of the concealed great uh, fear that he has of men because of the original wounding. Uh, that's really, oh, one other thing. Um, there are these things called the glom effect um, that happened during the, well, they've happened on Earth for a long time, but they're clearing now. And that is a kind of a confluence and flowing in the newosphere of energies that are similar. And in physical life, this is expressed as, as a tendency to gather around oneself or to go out and associate with people who have energy strands in their, uh, in their electromagnetic field that are similar to or glomable with one's, one's own. And so in this case, there would be a tendency for people to gather around this person or for this person to associate with people who have a second chakra soul wounding of other sorts. Uh, one expression that's more serious expression of second chakra soul wounding uh, that might glom to such a person has to do with the tendency to to look at women as sexual objects, um, to consider that they are they have no sentient awareness, to imagine them sim simply as objects, and to go forth uh, with sexual allure to garner women and their property, such as uh, money or else a house or like that. So that's just one sort of energy. Uh, as it's expressed in the world, that might glom to the very vast misogynist mental filter that is the shadow of the patriarchy mental filter in existence until 2012. Right now, the pendulum is shifting back, and men and, and women are coming more into balance of the sacred sexuality and the sacred norm. So all these things are coming to light, and each person, uh, each man needs to evaluate his own situation and decide how to, how to act in the future and how to best get through the clearing and the disclosure to his own soul.